Bruno and welcome to the launch of the Lamborghini Huracan LP 610-4. The 51st year of the history of Lamborghini is the beginning of a new era for us. I know as you have noticed that we are here in the area 51. Because this car is so important that we wanted to mark the beginning really of a new icon of a new era. Dusk and Dawn means that we are trying to fill the gap between the opposites. And this is what this car is all about. And uh, my colleagues will talk in uh, more detail about this in some minutes. G let me give you the opportunity to speak a bit about the year 2013 in terms of automotive industry and in terms of the luxury sports car business. If we start with uh, uh, the, the total car market for the first time uh, in 2013, uh, they were sold and delivered more than 70 million cars worldwide. In the US it's, uh, yeah, or well, North America it's 15 million, in Europe it's another 15 million, and in China it's another 15 million. So all the three markets just, they already make out uh, 45 million. They were all up the markets, except of Europe, and until the, the end of the crisis, or the beginning of the recovery in 2010, the market has a constant growth on a worldwide basis. So this is a good sign, even though with the currencies uh, in the year 2014, it's, it's not easy for all the manufacturers. If we look in to what uh, the exclusive super sports market is, then it's a complete different picture. We are not talking about millions, we are talking about thousands of cars. So even here, after the dip of the year uh, 20 or 2009, there was a recovery, but never back on the levels of the year 2007 or 2008. And uh, also here, the, the, let's say the pity is that the, 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 let's say the, the core market, our most important market, uh, where we are coming from, the European market, is not uh, recovering yet. If we then look into what Lamborghini is doing since the year 2010, we have a constant uh, growth in terms of volume, even though I have to say for us volume is not the key issue, but because we are always selling less than demand, and it's about exclusivity, and all the things we always talk about, it's clear that by investing a lot in the future, there is a need also to uh, set cars and not just to show the cars. What is good for Lamborghini is that we have a very balanced distribution in the major regions of this world. So we are selling almost one third, one third and one third worldwide. And this is um, helping us a bit to be independent from local crisis. As I said, we are investing a lot. First of all, in our uh, factory premises, we started heavily in the year 2010 with the building of the factory for the monocoque, of the carbon monocoque of the Aventador. In 2012, uh, we built up the, a new, complete new pre-series center. And the photo you see here is the photo of our uh, new logistics center. So all in all, we're really heavily investing and the picture is changing constantly. I don't know when you, it was the last time you went to Santa Agata, but every year you come, there is uh, a change. And what is the most important thing, we are investing uh, more than 20% of our turnover on a yearly base in research and development. These cars, they deserve it. These cars, they need to have always the latest technology, so it's clear that investments are on a very high level. If this is then compared to the turnover, which is constantly growing, this means also that the 20% is constantly rising. Last year, 2013, we had an absolute record high in terms of revenues with more than 500 million euros for the first time. And this is something which is always affecting, for sure, the, uh, the structure of Lamborghini. So in the last three years, we hired more than 300 people, 100 just in the year 2013. And we are also winning a lot of awards which are certifying from outside that we are a very effective employer, and this is paramount also for the quality of the people which are uh, coming to see uh, 
Lamborghini or they are uh, trying to get into our factory. And uh, the other uh, side of the picture is that we also look very carefully into uh, uh, the environment uh, and uh, the quality of life uh, around us. So we want to be in 2015, in terms of Sant'Agata Bolognese, so our headquarters, CO2 neutral, uh, which is an important step uh, also for the ethic uh, behavior of all of us. And uh, as you can see here in, uh, in Italy, we were nominated uh, <coughs> by, uh, we won a prize about being the ethical company in Italy. Outside of Sant'Agata, we have uh, national sales companies. We have them in uh, North America, so in Washington. We have one in Toronto, but also in Asia. In, uh, in uh, Beijing, we have the headquarter of our uh, region for the Asia Pacific region. Mm -hmm. We are in Tokyo, we are in, uh, in, we in India, in uh, New Delhi. New Delhi. No, New Delhi, I think we are in New Delhi. I don't think I remember now. But <laughs> There's no Indian here, so I'm not making a guess. <laughs> 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 no, it's in, Mo it's in Mumbai. Now I remember, it's in Mumbai. So all in all, we have uh, <coughs> uh, six national sales companies, and uh, the biggest dot is the green one, uh, which is representing uh, Sant'Agata Bolognese. And then we have 129 uh, partners worldwide, uh, which are spread out in uh, 46 uh, countries where we have, or where we are covering almost all, let's say, the spots of worlds, uh, with wells which uh, are existing around the world. Talking about the product, the, the Aventador, what is and was a tremendous success and it's still uh, going on because we, in three years, we sold as many cars, so 3,000, as we sold in seven years uh, with the predecessor, with the Murcielago, and we still have one year of order bank. And last year, uh, it was the first year in the history of Lamborghini that we that we sold more than a thousand uh, B12 cars. So very important for us, for the solidity of the company and uh, the image of our brand. And here is the Gallardo. In uh, the year 2003, there was the launch of the car. It was at the beginning perceived of, as the baby Lamborghini, but this name disappeared almost immediately. Uh, it established a clear understanding that uh, Lamborghini is going uh, in two segments of the super sports car business. And then in 2008, when we had the launch of the, of the facelift, we also had the record year in terms of sales. The last edition, or the Squadra Course edition, uh, was very competitive in, in uh, the second half of the year 2013, so just some months ago. We were winning a lot of uh, uh, lap time, so we were out beating all the competitors with a car which is 10 years old. Then uh, Maurizio Reggiani will tell you about this one in some minutes. As I said, the, the, for us, uh, the, the, the the Gagliardo was a game changer. The best year was uh, in 2008 with 1,844 cars delivered. All in all, in the 50 years of the history of Lamborghini, we sold uh, 30,000 cars, and only with the Gagliardo, 14,000. So you can imagine how important this car was for us, and how important this one is going to be uh, in the next years for Automobile Lamborghini. So this is the car. when. We started uh, to talk about the fall of the Gallardo some four years ago. It was clear that it had to be a car with uh, uh, innovative technology and which uh, should have been absolute in performance, so the best possible car in the segment. And also to, it has to be something which should have redefined the, the driving experience of a super sports car in, in the new era of Lamborghini. So easy on the road and performing on the racetrack. So like our motto, dusk and dawn. So you have to have a car which is getting all the attention of the driver on the racetrack, very performing, very fast, but then also very usable on a daily basis. So very easy uh, to handle on uh, the normal roads. And last but not least, the design should be clear, a classic Lamborghini. 
And uh, when we gave the, when I gave the briefing to my people, to the engineers, to the designer, to the entire company, together with the board and uh, Maurizio Reggiani is here today with me, then it was about two words, instinctive technology. Instinctive technology is what I said before. It's something which has to fit immediately like a glove when you uh, sit in the car, when you enter the car, and it has to give you the, the, not only the feeling, but the certainty that you are a better driver just by stepping into this car, much better than you expected ever to be. And you will experience this today on the race track and also on public roads. This is it from my side. These are the price ex, uh, prices, uh, uh, excluding uh, taxes. Now we will see a short video and then Mr. Reggiano will give uh, you uh, technical details about this instinctive technology and how we handle it. Grazie.